Throughout history, harpsichords have been associated with adventure, romance, and a little bit of mystery. So stay tuned as we take a look at the Italian harpsichord bundle from Real Samples. Okay, we're back, and this is Simeon for Audio Plugin Deals. You know, throughout my lifetime, I've had the great opportunity to travel to many places throughout the world. And one of the most memorable trips was uh, when I was able to visit the Louvre in Paris, France. And what an amazing collection of art and sculpture and instruments. And it's just amazing. Uh, it would probably take you uh, probably several years to actually go through uh, and see all of the collection that they have there. And um, well, and the Mona Lisa is not as big as what you think it is. <laughs> And uh, Real Samples is sort of like uh, a museum or a collector of these rare and vintage instruments that would have uh, otherwise been lost to history. But they've been able to go like Indiana Jones into uh, a lot of crazy places and pop probably a lot of stories they could tell about how they have come across such an amazing collection of instruments. And uh, today, we're going to take a look at three of their Italian harpsichords. So let's get right to it. So the first harpsichord that we're going to take a look at is the Pere Luigi 1579. So this harpsichord was built in 1579. And um, it, it kind of, it says, represents how harpsichords were, were built for about 200 years. And you can see that it has just a, a, a single set, a single eight foot stop is what they call it. And an eight foot really is not necessarily referring to length, it's referring to octaves. So eight foot would represent like what we would call uh, the central octave on a keyboard, like where middle C would start and going out that way. You'll notice that I'm running the full version of Contact. You also notice the missing uh, GUI and that type of thing. What Real Samples has done is that they've provided us with the raw material. It's just like these artifacts, these beautifully recorded uh, artifacts of these instruments. And so um, the top rack has the notes on, the bottom rack has the release samples. And what makes Real Samples even more special is that they give you eight different uh, key down uh, round robins and then four uh, round robins of the release samples. So that just helps you not to have that machine gun effect. So every time that you hit a key, uh, it's not going to sound the same because uh, harpsichords are not touch sensitive, so they're not affected by velocity layers and that type of thing. And I was really surprised uh, because the action is also not as heavy as a piano. So you, you hear these massively intricate uh, harpsichord pieces because the actions are very light. And so you have that, uh, the pluck, it plucks the string and then it resets that, uh, that plectrum. And then it just kind of gives you different, uh, different varieties of things. There's lots of stuff going on. So let's just take a listen at this, uh, at this first harpsichord in the bundle. Yeah, so you can just hear how nice and uh, nice and clear and uh, beautiful that sounds. Now the release samples. Uh, so when a harpsichord, uh, it actually plucks the string, and then when the uh, when it goes and resets, the pick is kind of depressed, and it just kind of goes back over the string and resets. So it plucks the string, comes back and resets, and so that reset is what gives you those um, those releases and the resets. And, and it adds so much to the uh, character of the sound. And, uh, you know, I don't know, a lot of, uh, it, it appears that a lot of uh, sample developers don't include that for some reason. So I wanna just show you real briefly uh, about how those, uh, those release samples and, uh, and how those variations sound. So here we go. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm just still using this equal temperament. I'm going to um, mute the uh, the release samples and just uh, kind of focus on uh, the keys down for a second. Here we go. Let's take a listen and see if and see if we can hear what's going on. Okay, so you can just hear little subtle differences here. Uh, and so now I'm going to turn the volume up on these releases uh, so you can so you can hear what's happening. And so again, it is the pick resetting. So here we go. And I think that is just so neat because you can hear that, you can hear the pick resetting over that string. So it just makes the instrument breathe and, and more realistic. So now let's take a look at the original tuning, which this is going to be interesting, 383, 383 hertz. Uh, so. So to our ears, that sounds crazy, but uh, back in 1579, that's exactly how they tuned it. So I think that's, that's really very interesting. Okay, so now let's go to the next harpsichord. Okay, so now this second harpsichord um, is, it's an anonymous. So they just kind of built someone, someone unknown, so, uh, anonymous, whoever anonymous is, uh, they built this harpsichord and this is a 1590. So it's a little bit, uh, a little bit different. It was built in 1590. They made a cabinet for it. And then the actual action was slid into that cabinet, the beautiful ornate uh, decorative, uh, decorative cabinets that they made. So I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to go to that equal temperament preset. Let's take a listen to how this one sounds different from the uh, previous one. It definitely has a different uh, timbre to it. Uh, it's a little it's a little richer i guess because of the cabinet size allows it to resonate a little bit more Yeah, so once you start playing these, it's like um, it's like you jump back into a, like a time machine, and it just whisks you right back. <laughs> it whisks you right back into that uh, that time period. And you know what happens to me? That's exactly what happens. It's just like you start going inside of these instruments and uh, it takes you uh, it takes you back and you and you have to put yourself behind uh, virtually put yourself behind sitting at these keyboards these very historic and uh, I mean I bet you they had a lot of stories they could tell So now harpsichord number three, it is another anonymous uh, harpsichord <laughs> built by anonymous. So anonymous must have built a whole lot of harpsichords uh, in, in their day. So this is a 1690 um, anonymous uh, harpsichord. And once again, you can just see the beautiful ornate artwork and design. So these were 
just beautiful pieces of art as well as uh, beautiful musical instruments. Now, what separates this one from the other ones is that it is actually built into the cabinet, but what's unusual is that they made the design so it kind of appears like it was inserted and the cabinet was built around it. So, uh, so it's kind of like, uh, kind of like a fake out, I guess. Uh, it belongs to a false inner outer instrument. That's what they call it. So it's a false inner outer. So they made it look like it was set inside a cabinet, but it's all built in together. So it's interesting, uh, just the ornateness of it. So the thing about this harpsichord is that it has uh, actually three different sounds. It has two eight foot stops. It has an, uh, a front eight foot stop and a rear eight foot stop that you can uh, isolate. And then it has a one that you can have on both plane at the same time. So you have three, uh, three different sound sources with this one. So, and again, each variation, uh, uh, each key, each note has eight uh, variations of note on and four uh, note off, over 1600 samples with this one. So let's, uh, let's take a listen to this third uh, 1690 anonymous uh, harpsichord. And so with this multi, you've got five racks. And so the top rack, the top two racks are the combined uh, front and eight foot stops together. The next two are the front stops, and then the last two are the rear eight foot stops. The, so you've got front and, front and rear separate and then a combined. So let's, let's just uh, go ahead and listen to uh, the front stop. And so what we do in this, in this case, uh, we just unmute the uh, front stop uh, multi here. So let's, let's take a listen and, and see if we can tell uh, what makes this different from the others. That's just the front eight foot stop. So let's mute that and let's uh, turn on the rear. And it just gives you something a little bit different. hear just the real crispness and you you know you can sort of hear those different uh, different layers going on uh, which makes it interesting it just makes it very interesting so now let's listen to both uh, front and rear uh, stops combined Yeah, that's a lot of fun. So, so there you have it. Basically, you have these three uh, pristinely recorded uh, harpsichords, uh, really uh, just a valuable, uh, beautiful pieces of art and that have survived over the centuries to land underneath our fingers. 
And one thing I just want to I want to kind of show you an experiment with. Uh, and uh, even though we don't have a lot of um, a lot of GUIs and things up up front, but you know, I was just uh, thinking if we clicked on this wrench icon, and I'm going to just keep the uh, double stop open here. So you have like all of the different things in contact. And believe me, I am I am not uh, I am not that great at contact. But what I thought uh, what I thought we could do um, is that we can use um, like these uh, these instrument effects. And uh, let's see, we can have a reverb. Uh, so we've got like a convolution. Well, let's see. Let's see. We don't. We can't use a convolution. So we've got. Let's see if we can add like a reverb. So we've got like a reverb here. Yeah. And uh, we've got the uh, the wet and dry mix here. And. Uh, And right away, you can hear uh, really something cool happening. Now let's just go ahead and see you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. You've got eight different slots here. Uh, and what you can do once you create your own types of things, um, you can save them. You can save them as uh, your own presets or multis. So I just plugged in the replica delay uh, just to see what will happen. Uh, let's see. Again, you start going down into that rabbit hole, uh, and you can just, uh, you know, even do like, uh, let's see something here. Um, let's just put a cabinet in there. And uh, let's turn the re. Let's you know, you can just select all of these different amp effects. Yeah. So you can take these instruments uh, a little bit further if you if you just click on that little wrench. There's some magic that uh, that happens there and uh, and if you if you, you know, love to love to do sound design and that type of thing you know learning how to get into some of those things with contact is a definite must so i hope you've enjoyed taking a journey uh, back into the past a little bit with these uh, beautiful italian harpsichords and uh, links are going to be in the description below and if it's your first time uh, visiting the channel uh, you know go ahead and subscribe and like the video and again this is simeon for audio plug-in deals and thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time